So you're thinking about Oakland in 2020, here are three neighborhoods that you should consider before moving here. Neighborhood number one, Lake Merritt, which actually isn't a neighborhood. There are many micro neighborhoods around Lake Merritt. I'm going to talk about three of those that are popular to both renters and homeowners. Lakeshore, Grand Lake, and Adams Point are those three. Grand Lake, Lakeshore, and Adams Point seem mostly residential. That's because a lot of the local shops, restaurants, and grocery stores and other services are on Lake Park Avenue, Grand Avenue, and Lakeshore Avenue. So being within walking distance to all these restaurants, bars, and shops is one reason that people choose to live in these neighborhoods. Most of the shops are locally owned. Um, there's Walden Pond Books, which has been around since 1973. There are tons of flower shops that are locally owned, thrift stores, bars, the Alley Cat. On the corner of Park and Grand is Grand Lake Theater, which unfortunately now is closed because of COVID. People also live by the lake because of the lake itself, the aesthetics of it, the activities that go on there, even during shelter in place. People run by the lake, bike by the lake, rollerblade, skateboard. People do aerial acrobatics. There are drum circles, other folks practicing their music and dance. It's the place to be. There's also the farmer's market every Saturday from nine to two. Every day of the week, we have food trucks and vendors who sell their jewelry, clothing, other items. Another attraction of Lake Merritt is Children's Fairyland, which has been around since 1950. It's basically a miniature theme park for kids. Only families are allowed. Because so many people want to live by the lake, these neighborhoods are expensive whether you're renting or buying. This status from the last 12 months, inventory has been low because of shelter in place, but turnover in these neighborhoods isn't usually as high as it is in other neighborhoods in Oakland. There's no median sold price for a single family home that's below a million. There are more condos, however, in each of these neighborhoods, so condo prices are significantly lower than the median prices for single family homes. The HOA fees for some of these condos around the lake tend to be higher than other condos in the city because of all the amenities the bigger buildings provide. In addition, many of the condo buildings around the lake and downtown are older, and so they might have upcoming special assessments for maintenance of the buildings. Now let's move from the Lakeshore area to neighborhood number two, the Laurel District. People who live in the Laurel District describe it as unpretentious and underrated. They say their neighbors are down to earth and they look out for each other. The neighborhood's described as family friendly and Upper Laurel is known for having a really great LGBTQ community. Two bedroom, one bath bungalow style homes are common in this area. They're a mix of Spanish and craftsmen. The median price point in the past six months for a single family home in the Laurel District was 760,000, which is lower than Oakland's median. Median condo prices were $510,000 for the past six months. So many young families choose Laurel because of its family friendliness, the diversity, and the proximity to 580 and Transbay buses. In addition, the neighborhood has easy access to Joaquin Miller Park and Redwood Regional Park, which is just up the hill. People love being within walking distance of MacArthur Boulevard, which has tons of shops, restaurants, bars, and other services. And everything still feels community-owned, not corporate-owned. Some of these restaurants that are Oakland staples include Everett and Jones Barbecue, Sequoia Diner, and World Ground Cafe, which has a huge cafe space and outdoor seating area. For groceries, people go to Farmer Joe's. There's a second location in the Diamond District. The Diamond District is just west of the Laurel District. So the Laurel and Diamond Districts are home to two of the best street fairs in Oakland. One is the music-focused Laurel Street Fair, which is held every August. It won't be this year, but it's held every August uh, between 35th and High Street. There's a food court, there's a craft beer garden, an outdoor shopping bazaar that spans over six blocks. There's also a kids carnival and petting zoo. The second festival is Oktoberfest, which is craft beer focused in the Diamond District every October. Now we're gonna move further north and west to Temescal, Oakland's top neighborhood number three. Temescal was one of the North Oakland neighborhoods that is known to have gentrified quickly after the last economic recession and the tech boom that's happened in the last decade that's brought a lot of people to Oakland. Temescal has a small town community vibe and a lot of younger hipsters and tech workers who commute to the city using the MacArthur BART and the Trans Bay bus lines. Oakland Children's Hospital is also in Temescal, so healthcare workers comprise some of the neighborhood's residents. Temescal homes are a mix of pre-war duplexes, bungalows, craftsman style, prairie style, and there are a few Victorians. There have been a couple of condo conversions from these larger, older buildings. And recently, there's been a lot of new development that's mostly built to rent as one of 
the more rapidly gentrified neighborhoods in Oakland, the median price point of homes has gone up significantly in the last 10 years. In the last 12 months, the median price on a single family home was 1.28 million. For condos, it was 710,000. So people who live here love the centrality of this neighborhood. There's easy access to public transportation, the MacArthur Bar, Transbay buses. You can walk or bike to Rock Ridge and Piedmont Avenue or Elmwood in Berkeley. Telegraph Avenue has a ton of restaurants. Many of them are favorites of mine. These are a mix of new establishments and Oakland staples. For example, Kingfish Pub. It's been around since 1922. It was literally moved from across the street where a new condo development is to its current location. There's Beauty's Bagel Shop. Aunt Mary's Cafe is one of my favorite places for brunch. There's a high concentration of Ethiopian restaurants in that area alone. So one of those that's Eritrean, like Ethiopian, Ashmaras. It's been around since 1985. My personal favorite is Abesha. Telegraph Avenue also has thrift shops, hair salons, a yoga studio. Temescal Plaza has more chain restaurants like Noah's Bagels, Pete's, there's Walgreens, the post office is there. I want to give some honorable mentions to places I forgot about that I go to all the time and are still busy during COVID. And one of those is in Temescal Alley, it's curbside creamery. They've got vegan soft serve, vegan ice cream, and of course, regular dairy products. There are two more I thought of. There's Author Max Tap and Snack, which has the best wings and pizza and a great patio space. Sometimes there's live music. Then there is Homeroom, also on 40th, but closer to Broadway. This place is known for its mac and cheese. There's just mac and cheese. So there are other great restaurants that aren't directly on Telegraph Ave. In addition, there is some nightlife in Temescal. Temescal Brewing has monthly events like Queer First Friday. And there tends to be spillover from Oakland's First Friday, which is downtown into Temescal. And finally, Temescal has an annual street fair which is music and art centric. And of course there are food vendors and breweries. Speaking of art, there is a ton of street art in Temescal. It has a very high concentration of murals on Telegraph Avenue alone. I almost forgot about Temescal Farmer's Market, which is every Saturday year round from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Because of Temescal Plaza, the high concentration of restaurants, the fact that Telegraph is a main thoroughfare from Berkeley to downtown Oakland and the main interstates, makes Temescal feel a lot busier than the other neighborhoods I've mentioned before. The areas of Temescal that are closer to Broadway tend to be quieter than the areas right by Telegraph Avenue. So if you want to live in an Oakland neighborhood that feels like a busy small town, is close to shops, restaurants, public transportation, is close to downtown Oakland, but not too close to downtown Oakland, then Temescal's your place.